Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the stories in the stars. We'll be focusing especially on Orion the Hunter today. Now, many of the stories in the stars that we get come from ancient Greek and Roman astronomy, but we know that many other cultures around the world saw different pictures in the sky. And so we'll also talk a little bit about some of the other pictures that we can see using some of the stars in Orion the Hunter. But without any further ado, let's jump on into our sky simulator and take a look at the story of Orion the Hunter. So here we are standing in front of the Cernan Earth and Space Center at Triton College in River Grove. We have our date set for March 26th and our time set for 9 o'clock in the evening, which is just a couple hours after sunset. And that's the best time to go out and take a look because the skies are nice and dark. We're facing west, looking right at the Cernan Earth and Space Center. And if we look up a little bit higher in the sky and a little bit more towards the south-southwest, we will see Orion the Hunter heading down towards the horizon. Let's turn and look a little bit closer at Orion. There we go. And we'll bring up the picture so we can see what he looks like in the sky. There he is. Now, Orion the Hunter is not alone in the sky. He's got a couple of friends with him as well. He has his trusty hunting dogs, Sirius, the big dog, and Procyon, the little dog. Now, they're up there in the sky with him. Those are his hunting dogs. Now, there are a lot of Greek and Roman myths surrounding Orion the Hunter. Orion was the son of Poseidon, the god of the sea, and he was a giant and the world's greatest hunter. And he made a couple of pretty boastful claims. One of the most famous stories about him is that he claimed he was going to hunt every animal on the earth. Well, Gaia, the goddess of the earth and of life, heard that, and she was not too pleased with Orion, so she sent a giant scorpion to go and attack him. And they had a humongous fight against each other. And Scorpius, the scorpion, won that fight and hurt Orion, almost killed him. Luckily, there was another character there, Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, who gave Orion an antidote and saved his life. But Orion and Scorpius, the scorpion, still hate each other. And that's why they're on opposite sides of the sky. So now, as we're exiting wintertime, we can see Orion beginning to set in the west. It's very much a wintertime constellation, whereas Scorpius lives on the opposite side of the sky in the summertime skies. So you'll see Scorpius starting to rise up as we get closer towards the summer months of June and July. And Orion will be well on the other side of the Earth in the daytime side of the sky during that point. Now, there's another story about Orion that I kind of think is funny. And that involves another shape in the sky that is pretty close by. If we follow Orion's belt across the sky here, it'll point us right towards this tiny little group of about seven stars that we call the Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters. And the story goes that Orion has fallen in love with all seven of those seven sisters. Now, they don't really care much about him, so he chases after them across the sky, and they constantly run away from him night after night for eternity. But they have a pretty good helper. They sit right on the shoulder of Taurus the bull, who we can see right here, and he's protecting them from Orion as he chases them across the nighttime sky. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, many of the shapes that we see here and many that we use across the nighttime sky come from ancient Greek and Roman mythology, and that's because, well, those were written down and passed along, and as Western science became the norm. Those are the ones that were being used. But we know that many cultures from around the world have many different pictures in the sky. Some of them we know pretty well. Some of them we don't know very much at all. But the nice thing about this program, Stellarium, is that we can use it to take a look at some of these other pictures that we do know in the sky. So I'm going to turn off all of our shapes here and we'll go through some of the other pictures that Orion could possibly represent, some of the ones that I think are rather interesting. So let's take a look and see what some other cultures thought of those. So here we can see the Arabic representation of Orion, and they simply called him the giant in the sky. That looks rather similar to the Western model of Orion the hunter. Another great representation of Orion is the Babylonian representation. They called him the shepherd of Anu, who was the god of everything. So this was the true shepherd of the god. 
and it looks a little bit different. The shape that they made was similar. You still have that belt around the waist, the shoulders, and the feet, but instead of holding a club, he's holding a long shepherd's crook up in the sky. Now, the Belarusians, they saw something completely different. They didn't see a person, but rather they saw a chair. They called it the throne in the sky. Now, the ancient Egyptians saw a person as well, but they didn't see quite the same shape. They saw a much larger shape. And what we know as Betelgeuse, the shoulder of Orion, is actually the tip of the hat of Sa, who was a great priest from ancient Egyptian times. And we can see that what we know of as the torso of Orion, they saw as kind of the tip of the hat, and then the body stretches way down to below the horizon. Now, Hawaiians also used the stars to navigate the, the seas as they traveled around, and they used Orion quite a bit, and they saw it as the cat's cradle, which is a familiar game played with string. You make a cat's cradle using your hands, and it does look rather like the stars in Orion. And one of my favorite representations that Orion makes in the, in the sky comes from the Ojibwe tribe of Native Americans, and they saw Orion as the winter maker. That's because Orion heralded the onset of winter and was seen throughout the wintertime sky. So they saw it as the spirit in the sky that would bring the winter months to them. Well, thank you everyone for learning about Orion the Hunter with me today. The important thing to remember though is that you can come up with whatever pictures and stories you want to in the sky. All you need to do is use your imagination. So get out there and take a look, connect the dots, and make up your own fun, wacky stories. Remember, the most important, important part of that, though, is to get out there and take a look at your night skies.